Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, also known as Nine Mudder Gang, and today I'm going to be doing an explanation video for both of the Jayhawk FXU robots. So we're going to start off with the 15-inch robot because it's more impressive and I like it better. Um, the 15-inch robot is actually our larger robot by far. That's the 24-inch. This is the 15-inch. It is like 14.9 inches wide and 14.9 inches long, and there's a lot of features that keep it in size. So these are like our 3D printed replacements for sprockets to hold the rubber bands. You can see they actually have like a bite taken out of them so they can actually like fit in size. And the flex wheels, they have a, also had to have a bite taken out of them to fit in size. Um, and that entire intake deploys. We actually have like a little ramp on top of our hang mech. So when you put the wing down, oh, that was the wrong button. There we go, wing down. Then the intake, you run it and it pulls itself off and then you can put the wing back up. Um, and then this intake will be down for the remainder of the match. So the intake, um, it was specifically designed to get tribals out of the match load bars, which I don't have all set up right now, but I can get a video of to put. But then picking up tribals off the field, it still worked pretty well at. This was definitely something that took a while to tune. So intake. Drive forward, sucks it all the way back. And then when we go to D-score, we would just spit them out. And it usually spat them out fast enough that they would get at least two corners wedged under the front of it. Um, so then moving on to some of the other things, we had a couple wings on this robot, three actually. So the first one is the wedged wing at the front, which I used up all my air using the hang mech earlier. So it's wedged wing, so pretty simple, just push tri balls over the barrier. And the intake also works when you have like a match load zone bar right there. So, intakes them up real nice. Then a couple other things about the intake. So 3D printed uh, rubber band holders. This runs at 600 RPM and that runs at 1,200 RPM. And we found those just through testing, whichever works best. It, it runs on chain. Um, we have a little bit of polycarbonate on the side, so it's not exposed, never snapped on us. So. Works pretty well. And that's just standard four bar intake. Um, same idea as Ace's Mall of America robot. Um, slightly different geometry though. Just tuned it to be a little bit better. Then moving on to the hang mechanism. This is definitely one of my favorite parts of the robot. Uh, this was extremely consistent. Uh, the only times it didn't successfully hang was when we were touching the wall on accident, which I quickly realized not to do. So it just goes up. Um, which was handy if we were either low on air or we wanted to get the same tier as our other robot for points. And then you pull up and lift the entire robot up to B tier. See, that was, that was a really nice hang mechanism. Um, it's a one cylinder hang. We got just one cylinder. It's, um, I think 16 millimeter uh, bore and the VEX ones are 10 millimeter bore, and it's based off of area, so that would make it like 2.5 times stronger. So you're able to just get away with one cylinder, and it's got like a 3D printed casing for it just to hold it in place. And it's just meant to buy some standoffs to the drive. Um, yeah, nothing too fancy there. And then some extra rubber bands just to pull it down um, for a bit of extra force. And this was all like just short enough to be able to drive under the barrier. Then moving to the back of the robot, and we have our motorized wing. So this was used for uh, match loading during skills and also just for pushing travels into the goal when we wanted to be extra long. Wing will go in. I would match load a tribal like that. And then wing would just slap it right out. And that works pretty well. Um, didn't, didn't use it in a whole matches a lot. We could also go out to the middle position. Um, which would then allow us to push travels into the goal. Because um, when we did it in combination with this wing, which I believe is this button, yeah, we would have nice long front. I believe that was about, I wanna say 30 inches across. So really nice just for pushing a bunch of travels into the goal during the autonomous period. So yeah, this wing, uh, nothing too fancy on it right there. Um, there you go. Uh, just single cylinder. Low on air, pulls in, pushes out. Um, just uses a bit of string in there. 
Um, and then in order to start the zip ties are for touching the bar at the end of autonomous for the autonomous win point. And they would start folded in like that to stay in size. And then when you flip out, zip ties just go down. And then the motorized wing thing in there to hold it. We originally used standoffs, but that was like incredibly scuffed. So just a nice little 3D printed mount holds it well. Don't have any issues with that. And that's 200 RPM direct. We originally used 100 RPM, but 200 RPM actually is a little enough torque to fully accelerate, but also slap the trebles really far. And then just like one tank, got a gyro, brain, battery mount. Um, there's the cylinder to control the wedged wing. Um, it's a little baby cylinder just because it doesn't need a lot of air. And it's just like wrapped around the motor with rubber bands because it's the right size spacing that there's really no wiggle room between those uh, golden fittings and the motor. Very convenient. Moving on to the 24 inch robot. Um, this is our 24 inch robot, which also is a sub six inch robot that could drive under the goal and D score, which we did a couple times during scrimmages. I don't believe we did in any of our actual matches, just never ended up lining up. So again, starting with the intake, uh, lots of flex wheels. Our goal is to make this intake as wide as possible um, because the previous version of this robot didn't have a wide intake and it was hard to line up. So we have exposed gears on the side here. Um, got a bearing and the motor, so still two points of contact. And then point of contact there, point of contact there. Didn't have any issues with the canty gears. Um, they're all, that's also a high strength shaft and uh, it's, it's a little bit mutilated in order to not have to put a shaft collar on the end. And then this one, just low strength shaft collar. Probably could have used a cap shaft if we wanted to. And then it has some sleds, which you can see right there. And um, we don't have a CNC machine, so those were cut by hand with tin snips. So when we wedge into the goal, the intake pops up and you actually don't even have to outtake. You can just ram into it and the tribals will fall out. But then if you go in from behind, the sleds push it down so you can drive under the goal. And this is actually powered by springs. Again, another Vex U thing. So spring take kind of like rests a little bit above the highest point that you can push it up to. Um, those are just kind of mounted on some standoffs so it can be pushed down and then rest. That's its nice resting position. Um, then the intake did get a little bit bent, you can see, um, because we lifted up the intake, which let me show off. Um, so we could lift up the intake which again, air. So that was in order to get the autonomous win point by touching the barrier and in order to stop us from driving under the goal during the autonomous period when we didn't necessarily want to. So that was only pulling on one side, which resulted in it bending over time, which was definitely a mistake on our part. Um, basic cylinder back there, nothing fancy. Then again, another motorized wing with a nice 3D printed mount that also would double as a sled. Um, and again, just 200 RPM. This one we used in skills, and we also used it in our match autonomous routine, um, and that worked pretty well when it worked. Um, nice wall roller there, just because we needed one for this side, just for the geometry of how we would push the tri balls down the wall, and it also helped with descoring. A um, couple of distance sensors we used for autonomous, battery, tank, brain. And then uh, this part of the robot was definitely the worst part of the robot, this wedged wing right here. Um, it actually got bent over time and was the reason that we got eliminated. Um, we should have run a different autonomous in hindsight, but it would get wedged and it ended up dragging on the ground, which threw off the autonomous routines. So this would pop out, but then when it would ram into the wall, it would get like bent down somehow. Um, we weren't able to replicate it. And then as you can see, it's not dragging right now, but somehow during the autonomous period, it got bent down even further and ended up dragging, which uh, screwed up the PID on the turns. Then by far my favorite part of this entire robot is, let me just put the intake up so you guys can see, is our beautiful, beautiful hang mechanism. Um, which is just that one, again, it's a thick cylinder, 16 millimeter bore, and it's got a nice 3D printed casing. Um, this, was, this was my favorite hang mechanism of all time. Um, so the way that it would work is you would just kind of line yourself up with the bar 
and it was actually really easy when you had the curved end on the bar. Um, it auto-aligned essentially. Then cylinder would go up. It would just so yeah. Then once you got it onto the bar, um, let me just hold this in place. You could sort of drive your way down it, and then pop the cylinder up. Both of these robots run eight motor drive. This one runs 360 RPM and this guy runs 450 RPM because why not eight motor drive? Um, it's back to you. I think that pretty much wraps everything up with these robots. Let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them.